one look at that picture and I burst into tears. I try to make some art out of it. I have one brief improvisational round of walking like a polar bear on thin ice, which is dreadful and shall not be repeated here, <laughs> but which leaves me depressed for a week. I call on some friends for moral support and my friend Paul sends me a postcard with a picture of Gandhi on it. <laughs> he's tacked up above my computer, grinning down at me. He looks like he's saying, mm hmm, you just think your work is hard. Silly girl, try peacefully expelling the British Empire from your homeland and weaving your own underwear. <laughs> Good grief, have some perspective. Well, back at the White House, it's late, and Lissa is totally ignoring the Mahatma's advice. Hey, Callie, come here. I need your help. Come on, what are you doing? Francine, the White House historian, she told me there's a secret passage from the residence to the wine cellar, and I found it. <laughs> Mama would call this drunk her and a boiled monkey. But I still haven't found the Holy Grail. Oh, the Grail's hidden in the White House? No. Follow me. Now, there is a legend about Lincoln's secret stash of absinthe. <laughs> Nobody knows where it is, but Francine has a clue, and I told her I'd share. Well, what's the clue? <clears throat> Turn left at the agent. <gasps> Justin! Ma'am? Callie? Were you, uh, looking for this? Oh, Lincoln's absinthe. Agent Tierney, how did you know? Mom, he's the lead agent on your detail. I bet he's got your underwear bugged. Sometime later, well into the absinthe. Callie, how can all this have happened so fast? In what, 150 years? The whole planet has humans, like a terminal disease. Reminds me of being a kid, hearing about the rapture, the end of days. It all becomes so weird and surreal so quick. Yeah, I remember the first time I heard about it, what could happen to us, I thought, I have no desire to see that, none. Huh. That was the first time I didn't want to live forever. Well, do you still feel that way? I don't think it matters. I don't think we'll be around that long. So why do you bother? Well, I still care. And if your father were president of the United States, wouldn't you think you could do something or that your mom could? Oh, but Callie, remember, I'm the first lady. All my work is symbolic. Totally depressed, Lissa dissolves into an absinthic haze. The walls swirl and melt. The furniture dissolves, and diaphanous figures start appearing in the distance. The opposite of shadowy, you could only call them lightowy. Oh, okay, you guys, you're gonna be all that. So what I want you to do is just wave your arms and make woo-woo sounds. <laughs> ready, Steve? Okay, ready and action. Beautiful, a little bit more spooky, and cut. You're hired. of your life's karma shall be reaped, except for the polydimensional beings. They are here on vacation. <laughs> okay, thanks. Namaste. Oh, no, wait, Mr. Gandhi, Mr. Gandhi. Shit. Come on. <coughs> Hi, who are you? My name is Iniga. See, this is what happened when Iniga started praying in the tree, a little amphibian astral projection. Pleased to meet you, Iniga. I'm Lissa. Are 
Are you a polydimensional being? No, I am a frog. You know, even for a frog, you look a little green around the gills. Are you okay? No, I am dying. Something is choking my skin. I have been looking for the sun. Well, I don't think you're gonna find it here. Wait a second, you're dying? Mm. Then what are you doing on that astral plane? Doesn't your soul come here after you die? Hmm. I do not know. Are you dead? Uh, no, no, I'm drunk. <laughs> this is a very complicated astral plane. <laughs> Lissa and Aniga swap global warming stories. They do a little astral bonding. Lissa says she wishes she could invite Aniga back to the White House, where she has her own personal tanning bed, something she sure would clear up Aniga's illness. And then she hears, <laughs> Callie? Who is that? It's my daughter. Lisa, where are you going? Oh, shoot. I think I'm being pulled back to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Kelly. I was talking to, um, uh, hmm. Well, so what? What is it? Mom, there's a story on CNN. You have got to see this. <clears throat> this is Gordon Sikular reporting from Turkey. Eight months ago, the international mining company Argenko proposed 62 gold mining projects across the Turkish countryside, beginning with a pilot project here in the tiny village of Gunizdolu. But when a local woman Yilmaz Koru learned that the extraction technology uses the poison cyanide. She decided the mine was unacceptable. The anar çok zehiri, klasik bir zehir. Bütün dünyada insan salını ve çevreyi kötü şekilde etkiliyor. Okay, so what I was going to do was act out the whole story complete with Turkish dialogue, but that'd be showing off. So. <laughs> Quickie summary, a group of women stopped this gold mining project by denying sex to their husbands and marching naked through the streets. This actually happened in 1998. The piece ends with Yilmaz saying through the translator, Kazanan biz olacağız. Trying very hard not to annoy the women of Gunasdolu, this is Gordon Secular. <laughs> Dang. That is a very good idea for you. You should do that. Oh, uh, shut up. Ah! What is it, Mom? A spider? No, it's a frog. A frog? Lisa, it is me, Iniga. Can't you see it? It's talking to me. Lisa, it is me, Iniga. Kelly! Mom, you must be hallucinating from the absence. Now, you hold on and I will be right back. Justin! Lisa, you are not hallucinating. I am here. Iniga! Oh, Iniga! Hi! Hello. <laughs> what are you doing here? I like you and I want to try your tanning bed. So I hitched a ride. How on earth would I tell you? That is a very good idea for you. What is? Those ladies who want to stop the mine, you want to stop something much bigger. You should do what they are doing. <laughs> You're right, I can just see that now. Okay, everybody, I just want to announce that I, first lady of the United States, married to the president and leader of the free world, am not having sex with him. Not because he's busy bumping a bony ass power whore, but on behalf of our poor suffering planet. <laughs> That'll work. Lisa. Do you not believe there are many people who care about these problems? Well, yeah. And if they were all not having sex, they'd get testy. Do you not believe it is the testy, the uncomfortable, who take the best action? Huh. And what of the people having sex denied to them? Would they not want to solve this dilemma as quickly as possible? Aniga? You are one smart frog. Can you stick around for a while? 